Hello everyone. Let's start our Vault installation lab. In this lab, we're gonna start to install our first Vault. I already installed the Windows 2012 on this machine. It is in my ESXi server. Let's log in. It's a brand new installation. Nothing has been set up other than the IP address. You might want to update the system to the latest version, latest patch. You don't need to add any roles and features in at this moment. Everything keep as default for installation the vault. There's a couple of steps we need to think about it. Hardening communication, how to access to it. Since I'm using it in the lab, I would like to have RTP session still open. In that way, you may want to enable your RTP and also make sure your firewall allows RTP. So you may want to allow remote connection to this computer, that settings. And also you may want to select the user by default or administrators are allowed. Also, you may want to make sure your firewall has the right rules to allow you get in using the RDP client. So you want to maintain your Windows firewall is on. You want to make sure the inbound rule for the RDP to be enabled and make sure it's enabled for proper profile. After you've done that, you can use RTP connection directly log into it. That's the way how I do the configuration, the vault server. Okay, now let's start to work on the CyberArk Vault installation. Before the installation, you need to have installation files copied over. In my case, I copied to CyberArk installation files folder. There's a private Arc client. This is the client installation file, disaster recovery installation file, and also server installation file. Make sure all of them copied over. We will need to install server and client. For our advanced lab, we're gonna do the disaster recovery installation, but we will not be in this lab right now. It will be on later. Somebody may wondering, Cyborg has automation process, this uh, automation power script to run, but that's not for Vault. That's for PVWA, CPM, and PSM. I'm going to show you to use script to install those components, but for the Vault, you do have to go through all manual steps. So, pre installation steps, let's go to network connections, control panel, view network status and tasks. Change your adapter properties. Right click and Ethernet zero. There's a lot of settings here need to be changed. We don't need the IPv6. For the IPv4, I put IP address, subnet mask, default gateway. Those I need to be changed. First thing, IP address, you need that for sure. You don't need the default gateway. You don't need anyone outside of your local network to access the wall. But if you have multiple sites, that's a different story, then you need default gateway. In my case, I don't need that. DNS, no. You don't need LM host lookup. Okay, all looks good. Again, we need to uninstall some features. We don't need the client from Microsoft networks. We don't need to file and print the sharing from Microsoft networks. We don't need 
QoS package scheduler. We don't need the link layer topology discover map IO drive. We don't need the link layer topology discover responder. So we can uninstall that. Now need to uninstall that. Need to uninstall it. You only need to keep IPv6 with no check on it, not enable, and only leave IPv4. That's the only thing you need. You need to restart our computer. It will be back in a minute. You can check our ESXi to see if system come back. It has come back already. Let's log in. System is back online again. Server manager is going to launch. We don't need that. We can turn it off from the startup. Don't start server manager automatically at the logon. Now we can start to install the CyberArk Vault. So let's browse to the CyberArk installation files folder. Start with server first, then we go to client. Right click your setup, run as administrator. That's very important. Run the setup program always as administrator. So this uh, .NET framework 4.5.2 need to be installed. It will take a couple of minutes to get it done. Finally, the .NET framework 4.5.2 installed. It requires reboot system. So let's uh, click yes to restart. It's rebooting. System come back online. Login from our remote desktop client. Actually, the installation process is going to continue after you reboot it. You don't have to manually go to setup.exe, right click on it. So it's detected this uh, vault is being installed over an RTP session. So future RTP access to the vault will be compromised the vault security level. So that's exactly what we want. It's in, this is in our lab. So if it's in a production environment, for sure you're gonna do this installation locally, not through RDP. But since this is in our lab, you can accept this risk and continue going forward. Next, next, accept license agreement. We are doing standalone vault installation later. If you are, do, you are planning to do cluster node vault installation, that's different. We will do DR with the standard ROM vault installation, but the cluster node vault installation is completely different. For standard ROM, we still can do DR setup, continue, continue. So here is the license. You need a license at this moment. So I already put into the download folder. Okay, next. There's an operator CD, you need to have that. So once you purchase the CyberArk software, they will mail you the master CD, operator CD, and the installation CD. So that's the one we needed, operator CD here. So remote terminal IP address. Remote control client password, confirm password. We can skip this one. We were using private arc to log in to our vault. We don't need the remote control agent to do this. In this basic installation lab, we are not using this vault environment, so we don't need this rapid 
MQTM. So we can skip that as well. So CyberArk recommends hardening operating system. So since this is, if this is not lab environment, I would strongly suggest you to go ahead to the next because this is lab environment. I'm gonna present in lots of uh, troubleshootings, lots of things. So I will not allow installation to do hardening in this machine. Again, if it's in the production environment, please not choose in this. Okay, now we need to set up building user's password, the master password and administrator password. The first, your first vault administrator password. Master password is critical. Please set up different password, enough long complexity, all those things into considering and write down, keep it in somewhere safe. Uh, since it is a lab environment, all accounts I'm going to use in just one password to make it my life simple, easier. Reboot it again. System is come back online. Let's log in again using RTP client. Because we install a vault from RTP session, so the RDP has been allowed by Vault Firewall itself. So if you are doing it locally, the RDP is going to be blocked by private ARC server. There's no error message, and you can see Firewall contains external rules, is open for client communication, open for non-standard address, server 11.0.11.01.0 is up. Perfect, no error. Next step, we're gonna install private ARC client, which is used to manage your vault. Find out setup.exe file application run as administrator. We're going to define our vault. Later on, uh, right now we are using private ARC authentication. Later on, we can use some PKI, radius, LDAP, once we have those things set up. That will be in our advanced lab. Let's default IE browser configuration. You can ignore that. Uh, it's going to be the reboot again. RTP login into our vault. Now we can see there are two icons. One is private ARC server. So we can verify the status. From here, there's no error message, no red sign here. Server has been started. You can stop here and then start it from like this server console. We can see firewall is open for client communication. None. We can double click private arc to log into our server since firewall is open for connection. We already defined uh, our first. Vault. That's the password we entered when we install Vault Server. So once you can log in, that means authentication successful. And we can see there's a three saves here. Notification engine systems, Vault internal, perfect. The one thing we want, we want to check is the services. There are six services created by this installation. We can verify those services has been up and running. Event notification engine is starting. Cyber Archaeological container is running. 
there's a private arc service here database is running remote control agent we, we didn't install that component so service is here but didn't start it survey is run um, since we haven't done hardening there's a one service missing here we don't have cyber arc hardened windows firewall listed here we are still using windows internal firewall this one so once we done hardening the hardening script will change windows firewall rebrand this name to cyber arc hardened windows firewall and then it is going to show up in this section so then we will have six total cyber service yes right now we have five of them because we haven't done a hardening if you really want to do the hardening and once everything set it up you can go back here to the installation files servers this hardening script you can run from here the hardening application you're going to run it from same thing you're gonna run it as a administrator you're gonna leave it now for next lab um, later on we're gonna do hardening once we kind of finished our lab then we will get this part done that's all for wild installation thank you very much for watching